This is CBS News Bay Area with Juliet Goodrich. Hello. So millions of people rely on it to get around, but tonight there is a warning that the Bay Area's transit system may be in danger of getting derailed if the governor doesn't step in to help. Now, BART is projecting an operating deficit of $143 million in the next fiscal year. For Muni, that number is $130 million, and Caltrain is facing a $49 million shortfall. Now, San Francisco Mayor London Breed is calling on state lawmakers to include a transit bailout in their upcoming budget. Jose Martinez on what might happen if they don't. Yeah, it's very interesting how some passengers are dealing with this transit issues here at Millbrae. We spent some time with two of them. One says he barely takes the bar trains, only does it when he has to go to the airport, and the other one actually depends on it. So he says if they reduce the number of trains this summer, it's going to be a nightmare for him. I love riding here. Meet Joey Sanko, a Bay Area resident who used to rely on BART for his daily commute. However, today he finds the transit system too dangerous. I used to pre-COVID, but uh, since COVID, obviously nobody took it, right? But even now, post-COVID, it doesn't seem as safe as it was before, so I don't take it like I used to. I, don't, I, I just drive. We caught up with Joey as he was heading to the airport, the only reason he says he would take BART these days. But for other residents like Gerard Rujin-Gabigui, who doesn't own a car, BART and Caltrain are the only options for their daily commute. The trains are very helpful, and um, I have been using the trains for the whole time. I haven't been uh, late to my normal uh, uh, services. He's a fellow at Stanford University. And he takes the train to Palo Alto every day. For him, any reduction in train services during the summer would be a nightmare. And that could happen if BART and the San Francisco Municipal Transportation Agency, which operates Muni, don't get a $5 billion bailout included in the state budget. I think it would be problematic if it stops. And you were telling us that you would have to take the bus. And that yes, How yes. How long would that take you from your house to get to Stanford if you had to take the bus? More than an hour, yes. But for the train, it is 20 minutes. On Wednesday, Mayor London Breed sent a letter to state lawmakers urging them to include transit operations funding in the state budget. She emphasized that San Francisco's economy, still recovering from the pandemic, cannot fully rebound if its transit systems collapse. However, Governor Newsom has already mentioned that while he's open to transit funding proposals, the state is facing its own 31 billion budget gap and might not be able to provide any substantial financial assistance. So, if it happens, is that right? Because the, the the intentions there, right, and the plans are there, but if they can't fund it and so forth, it still doesn't happen. So the bottom line is, if it doesn't happen, then we keep doing what what's safer for us. Now, a group of supervisors is also trying to get help. They're calling on the state government to use federal highway funds to close the budget deficit. You know, it's been a rough day for BART riders. The system experienced major backups after equipment problem near the San Bruno station. Red line service is now back up and running at all stations. And in the past few minutes, the CHP confirmed a crash that shut down westbound 580 in Oakland this afternoon involved road rage and gunfire. Officers tell us one of the drivers took a shot at the other after their vehicles collided near Keller Avenue. No one was hit, but both drivers were detained for questioning. Officers say they also found a gun on the road, which has now reopened the investigation. All right, Oakland, like many other cities, is hoping to jolt some life back into its own downtown area. According to the Chronicle, 29% of the city's office space is empty, and that's compared to 11% pre-pandemic. But a shift may be on the horizon, and Sean Chitness introduces us to a one longtime business owner who thought now was the right time to open his first brick-and-mortar store. Bay Area coffee lovers now have one more option to get their go-to drink. Locally roasted and served up fresh in Oakland in a new downtown location. Behind the machine today, co-owner Luigi Di Rocco. We've been getting a pretty good reception from the neighborhood so far. People seem to be excited to uh, 
check out the new spot. Still in their first week and it's a hot start with a steady flow of customers. The cafe continues to celebrate their heritage. The layout inside features a long bar like you might see in Italy, encouraging customers to come up and place an order rather than waiting in a line. We roast our coffee over an oak wood fire, so we wanted to have there to be a connection between the bar and the way we roast our coffee. The family owned business signed a lease for this spot in January 2020 when downtown Oakland was booming. But the pandemic and construction delays pushed back their open. We still believe pretty strongly in the uh, downtown Oakland market, um, but we also know there's some limitations uh, based on office capacities and, and whatnot. Experts in the commercial real estate market say restaurants, bars and cafes have been the first to fill up open spots in Oakland. Not only are more people choosing to live here, but the nightlife draws in more business downtown. We need office uh, to come back. Uh, we know that we're not going to see office, you know, five days a week, eight hours a day. Uh, but we need to have people come back downtown to work, to eat, to shop. So while they're making more deals to sign leases, companies encouraging workers to come into the office more often will get them back to pre-pandemic levels sooner. There really is a lot of good happening in Oakland, and we just need Oaklanders and, and others to support it and come down here. Luigi also knows there's plenty of room to grow, but feels there's more heat in this part of the Bay Area and thinks they'll pick up more steam when it comes to increasing business for him and his neighbors. We wouldn't uh, look to open our first cafe uh, anywhere else but here. We believe in the area. We want, to, we want to see it do well. Staying true to their traditions from abroad and the business they've been brewing for decades in the Bay. Charges have been reportedly dropped for one of the suspects in the deadly freeway shooting of Oakland toddler Jasper Wu. According to the Chronicle, the judge cleared Johnny Jackson Jr. in the case, saying he fired back at the other two defendants in self-defense when they shot at his car on 880 back in 2021. The Wu family was caught in the crossfire. Emotions certainly boiled over in San Francisco at the funeral of Banco Brown. At one point, people started shouting and shoving, but things eventually calmed down and the service resumed. It was held at Third Baptist Church, where Brown once went to Sunday school. Uh, it gives us pain. It gives us anguish. And I know that we're troubled and we're feeling tragic impact within our souls. Thank you for to live on in her dedication of God. To get along, to love one another, to do more. Brown was shot and killed a month ago by a Walgreens security guard trying to stop him from shoplifting. The state attorney general agreed this week to take a look at the case after San Francisco's D.A. said she lacked evidence to file a murder charge. A hotel in Southern California got a surprise guest this week. A sea lion uh, just decided to check in. Now, this is the time of year when young sea lions start to venture away from their mamas. And, well, this little guy... Went a little bit too far, climbed over several gates, went through a staircase. Look at that at the Pismo Beach property. Police came, used a dog catching device, took the seal back to the ground floor, released it back onto the beach. And that's the story at the Sand Castle. Thanks for watching the news. Continue streaming on CBS News Bay Area. We will see you back here at 11 with more fun stories like that. We promise.